In the previous video, we introduced the very basic definitions of graph theory. So defining graphs in terms of a set of nodes and a set of edges, such that the edges were subsets of either size one or size two of the set of nodes. So an edge which has one node associated with it would be a node looping to itself and that an edge with two nodes associated with it would be connecting those two nodes. We can extend this definition to the idea of a path. And the path is just a sequence of edges. And this definition where for i going from 1 to n minus 1, ei intersection ei plus 1 is not the empty set. It's basically saying that consecutive edges share a node in common. So in other words, if I think of this as following, tracing out a path, the first edge ends where the second edge starts. The second edge ends where the third edge starts. So you can think of this like in the, uh, the graph in the top right hand corner here, I can have a path from three to two by going three to one as the first edge, one to four as the second edge, four to two as the next edge, because each of these in the sequence ends where the next one starts. So that's just my, I suppose, set notation definition of saying I've got a sequence of edges such that each edge shares a node with the previous edge. And I can say that a path is a simple path if all nodes that it goes through are distinct, they never revisit the same node. And the circuit, or sometimes a closed path, is just one where the first and last edge of the path share a common node. So like in the bottom graph, going one to two to four to one is a closed path because the path starts at one and the path ends at one. And we can define the length of a path simply by the number of edges in the path. So the path at the top going from three to two would have path length three because three to one is one edge, one to four is one edge, four to two is one edge. We can also define a graph as being connected if for every pair of nodes, x and y, that there is a path from x ending at y. So in the top graph, that's fully connected. Every node, you can access every other. The lower graph is not connected because although the subgraph containing one, two and four is connected, node three is disconnected. There is no path either from three to say one or from another node, say four to three. And we say that an edge is incident to a node if that node is contained within the edge. So we might say that um, node one is incident to the edge joining one and two and the edge joining one and four in the lower graph. And we lastly say the two nodes are adjacent if there is an edge which contains both of them. If we've got an undirected graph, then we define the degree of a node, which we tend to know, denote as something like deg of the uh, node's name. And this is just equal to the number of adjacent vertices. Here we'll count a loop twice. You will see some definitions that will say just count a loop once. There's pros and cons to both definitions, but here 
we will define it counting a loop twice. So here, if I say uh, the degree of vertex one, of node one, is three. There are three edges joining it. There's the edge between one and three, the edge between one and four, and the edge between one and two. Node two has degree two. There's just the edge going one to two and the edge going two to four. Now three has degree three because it has one edge joining it to node one and it has the loop, so the double counted edge joining it to itself. So that makes it degree three. And then lastly, node four, vertex four, has degree two because there's two edges associated with it. Now that definition doesn't work for a directed graph because I need to, I may have an asymmetry in the number of edges going into a node and going out of a node. So I have to split the definition of a degree into an in degree and an out degree. So if I look at this directed graph here, then the in degrees I can think of as the number of arrows going into the node. So here I don't have to count the, um, the loop twice because it isn't three going into three clockwise and three going into three anti-clockwise. Here it's only going in once. So the only node with more than one arrow going into it is node one. And similarly, when I look at um, the out degrees, three is the only one with uh, two arrows going out of it. It's got one arrow going out of it from three to one and one arrow going out of it back to itself. We call a graph complete if every possible node between two distinct edges is actually in the graph. So if I've got n nodes, I would have n choose two possible different edges. So if they are all in the graph, then for a four node graph, I would get something like this, where every node uh, has three edges associated with it, each connecting to, or each connecting to one of the other three nodes, such as all of those, in this case, four nodes, four choose two. This has six edges. So the four sides of the square and the two diagonals. Now a similar concept is the idea of a bipartite graph and a complete bipartite graph is not one where every node is joined to every other node, but the bipartite where I can split it into two subsets, such that every node in one subset is adjacent to every node in the other subset. So for example, if I had um, the set of nodes here, five nodes, one, two, three, four, five, this graph representation, I can split a subset V1 being the nodes one and two, V2 being the uh, subset of nodes three, four, five, and there's edges between both one and two to each of three, four, and five. 